it's one thing to know a thing is the truth. It's another thing how how do you stay right with God through it? Brad likes practical. Small, give me pra give me small, give me practical small. steps, right? Yeah. Tell you one of the biggest lies that is in the well, just out there in general is that we are our own man, or you are your own woman. Let me tell you, you're bought with a price. If you belong to Christ, you're His. If you're not His, you're Satan's. You are not your own. That is one of the biggest seducing or doctrines and seducing spirits that's out there. Because people have this sense of independence. They have this sense of uh, this right to be their own person. And let me tell you, you don't. We have a right to do one thing. That's either serve God or serve the enemy. And I pray people choose to serve God. Because that's the better place to be. But let me tell you, if you're trying to serve two things, that's where the trouble hits. It's bad enough when the world's coming against you. It's bad enough when the enemy's trying to tear you down. But when you are indecisive in your own heart, it is impossible for you to stand. It is impossible for you to be able to even put one foot in front of the other because you're conflicted constantly. I look at people that struggle so much and they have so much of the world in them that they're trying to somehow reconcile with walking with the Lord that they can't seem to get past the bondage that they're in. They can't seem to break through the trouble they're in. They can't seem to break, break through the attitudes or the, or, the, um, or the condemnation. They can't seem to break through that bondage that continues to hold them back because they're conflicted. And they're trying to somehow justify their fleshly existence with walking with God. And let me tell you, you can't do it. You cannot do it. And the church today, if we go back to that doctrine of devils and the seducing spirits, if you go back there, part of what the church has done today so much is they have, they have allowed the lifestyle of the world to come into the church and then justify it as okay. They have allowed the doctrines of the world to come in and justify it and say it's okay, it's not your fault. You really can't do anything about it. They have removed that idea of personal responsibility between you and the Lord to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We go over here to chapter 6 of Matthew. It says this, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. We want to talk about rubber meeting the road in 2009. We want to talk about things that come up. Let me tell you, if your eyes double, in other words, you're trying to walk after the flesh and trying to walk after the spirit. You're trying to maintain your earthly pleasures, but yet receive the benefits of Christianity. Can't do it. Can't no, do it. No, you can't. You can't do it. You have to single, you have to make that choice to set your focus solely on Jesus Christ. That's right. Solely on him. Solely on his word. Solely on his way. You cannot mix your way, the world's way, with his way. It has to be his way. We've said it over and over and over that Jesus is the way. Right. And his way is the way. Right. Okay? People will say Jesus is the way, but they leave out the fact that his way is the way. And when your eye is not single, you're trying to mix in all this other stuff to try and justify yourself, <laughs> to continue walking your way, continue doing your thing, but yet saying you're doing God's thing. Let me tell you, it cannot be done. Can't be done. It says again, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, and if we're looking at opposites here, single is good, evil or dual would be evil. So if your focus is split between the world and God, what is it? Evil. Evil evil. You cannot have a split focus. You cannot have a split agenda. You have to you have to relinquish your will, your way and focus on God's will and his way. If I have an employee that works for me and I give him tasks to accomplish and he is all about doing his thing and not my thing is he a good employee? No. If we are the servants of the Lord and he has given us things to accomplish 
Let's look at what are some of the things God's told us to do. Raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Preach the gospel is another one. Amen. Love one another is another one. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. Can we please block that one out? <laughs> Can we get the big black marker and cross that one right out? I got one. <laughs> you got I keep one handy. Don't we, don't we not have the basic principles? I mean, love God, love one another at the very root. Jesus says, if you love, if you love me, do what I say. The opposite of that is that if we're all about doing our thing and not his thing, the truth is that we do not love God. And to say you do is fantasy. To say you do is a lie. It says in 1 John that if a man says he loves God and hates his brother, he's what? Liar. Liar. What's it mean to hate? To not prefer. It means to not prefer. What do I prefer? Do I prefer my way, my desires, my wants? Or do I prefer to do the will of God? Which is it? Which is it? And we're talking about faith and rubber meeting the road here. If we're going to survive this year, shoot, if we're going to survive just our life and make it to heaven, we've got to understand <coughs> that Jesus has to be first in our life. He has to take first place. If we allow anything else to get in the way, we're fooling ourselves. Luke 14 says, Lest a man hate his mother, father, brother, sister, and all the various things, he's not fit to be my disciple. He's not talking about hate in the way we think hate. He's talking about not preferring. If you prefer them to the Lord, your priorities are off, and your eye is not single. Not single. Now this is something that is not preached often enough <coughs> because people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that, wait a minute, I can't have my way. I can't do it my way. I can't have things my way. I've got to submit my entire existence to God. I don't like that. It comes down to trust. <coughs> How many times have we put trust in things and people and government and whatever and it fail us? Recently. Constantly. All the time. Anyone with a 401k knows what that's like right now. I used to. You can't trust that stuff. No. But in our, in our flesh, in our natural man, to trust God is impossible. It can't do it. It cannot do it. But in our soul and our spirit, we can still yet choose to trust God. And that's, where, that's really where our fight is. That's where our struggle is. That's where our battle is. Is constantly choosing God's way over our way. God's way over our way. And how do you do it? You go back to the Word of God. You go back to the Word of God. People ask me, what are you? I said, I'm a fundamentalist. I believe God's Word to be true. That's what I believe. I believe that if I think a thing... And then I look at God's word, and it says the opposite of what I of what I think. Then I change me to match the word, because God's word is the standard. God's word is true. I've been mistaken before; it's happened. I've been wrong. I'll be wrong again, and I'm okay with that because I want to be right. So I'll come to the word of God, and I'll examine myself before the word of God, and I'll. Bring myself before those that also have the Spirit of God and say, help me. I want that. I want my eye to be single. I want my focus to be single. I want my purpose to be single. You know, it's been on my heart this year on that song we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. And I keep saying this, but I think it's important enough to mention again that when I sing that song, it's not about I want some sort of satisfaction about seeing God. It's not why I sing it. When I sing that song, I'm saying, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see like you see. Mm -hmm. So I can see your move. So I can hear your word. So I can be in your spirit. Mm -hmm. So I can have the testimony of my life like Jesus did when he said, those things that I see and hear the Father do, that's what I do. That's what I want.